Hey, hey squaddies. squaddies. Welcome to this week's episode of the Travel Squad Podcast. Today, we're airing one of our most popular episodes from the past three years. We have hundreds of episodes now, and lately we've been replaying the most well-received and listened to episodes, and you all have been loving it. We're going to keep giving you what you want and give new squaddies the chance to hear past episodes without having to go digging through the archives. New episodes are still launching every other week while classics like this are airing in between. Enjoy Enjoy the the show show and and happy happy Travel Travel Tuesday. Tuesday. Welcome to the Travel Squad Podcast. We're four friends that grew up together in the same small town. We followed each other to San Diego, and now we adventure the world together. One passport stamp at a time. We're here to share our travel stories and inspire you to go on your own adventures. Even if it starts with your own backyard. I'm Jamal. Brittany. Kim. And I'm Dana. And, and we're, we're the, the Travel Squad, Squad Podcast. Podcast. So grab your ticket, your passport, and don't forget your travel insurance. And prepare for takeoff. Hello, fellow travelers. Hey. hey! Welcome to episode 63 of the Travel Squad podcast. Today, we're talking all about staying healthy while traveling. I'm excited for this episode because I don't really know what I'm going to add to it because every single trip I get sick. I guess you can say I'm a Donald Trump of traveling in terms of nobody knows getting sick on the road like I do. He knows everything. He does. On every topic. And Zaina, you know everything about getting sick on vacation. That's your forte. I do. Well, then we need you for this episode. Strap throat, Montezuma's revenge. Uh, Herpes outbreaks. No. (laughs) (laughs) No. No, no. Ear infection, flu, you name it, except for herpes outbreaks. I got it. Nice. Well, I've always been one to power through. I rarely ever get sick in general, and I rarely, even more rarely, get sick while traveling. We're recording this in about mid-November right now. I just came off a trip to Boston where it was nice and chilly and rainy. Did I get sick? No, but I have gone sick one time. There's one time that sticks in my head and that was when I think I was about 22 and it was for my birthday and I was going to Las Vegas with my boyfriend and his friend and it was actually a spur of the moment trip. We were coming to San Diego it was when we lived in Sacramento and we were driving down the five, probably been driving for about two, three hours and decided, why don't we go to Vegas? And we diverted to the 99 instead of the five and drove to Vegas Got there maybe two, three in the morning, partied all night. I was in the back seat coughing because I was so sick, but I didn't want to miss this trip. So this was like obviously way, way before COVID, but I powered through. I went to the oxygen bar in Vegas and got a massage to help me breathe, but I powered through. I was going to say, so you got somebody else sick by going to the oxygen bar and being sick, <laughs> they putting your it. germs on that. <laughs> well, hopefully they cleaned it. I'm or not, they're like, They do. I'm just giving you a hard time. <laughs> but yeah, that's obviously not something anybody would do in this day and age. But this episode is not about being sick while traveling. It's about how not to be sick and not to get sick while traveling, which is really relevant at this time. Yeah, I was just going to say this episode is just so relevant because we are currently living through a pandemic and we should all be doing our best to stay healthy while traveling and keeping everyone else safe as well. Jamal and I have some upcoming trips. We're going to Arches and Canyonlands and Capitol Reef. Wait, when are you doing that? This weekend. Oh, I didn't know that. We're going Leaving to Arches and Canyonlands this weekend. So by the going time this airs, we've already gone. Oh, oh okay. that's right. Because you guys are going to go try that burrito place where I used to live that I keep talking about. Yes. Oh, I can't wait to get a text message here to hear all about it. <laughs> so we want to keep everyone safe and be safe ourselves while we're traveling. And flights are going to start flying at full capacity soon. So we're going to be using a lot of our own tips that we're providing. And I just want to call you out real quick, Kim. I could think of another time that you've gotten sick on a trip. It was our first squad trip. I'm just going to leave it at that. We can continue on. You can go back to our episode on hiking the Inca Trail in Peru to hear all about how I got sick and still powered through. You did. And it was only a one day sickness. I would say maybe half a day. And Zaina also got sick on that trip and I nursed her back to health. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And quite honestly, a tip that we're going to have later is what saved you on that trip. Am I wrong, Kim? Mm -hmm. Right. So stay tuned for that. 
tips that we give here have been used. They are foolproof. Yeah, we have a really great episode in store for you. We're going to cover what to pack to stay healthy while traveling, how to prepare for your trip, and what to do if you get sick on a trip. So let's get into the episode. So let's talk about what to pack. Well, the first thing is going to be sanitizing wipes. And even before COVID, we would have this on this list. We always did it. You can go back and listen to our pre-COVID episodes. This was always a solid tip that we gave, and it's even more relevant now. Do bring your sanitizing wipes, whether it be you are out in public, touching anything, you want to have them, but more particularly when you're on an airplane. Because when you're on an airplane, what do we want to sanitize, ladies? Everything. The tray tables, armrests, touch screens, light buttons, seat belts, windows, anything that you plan or touching or putting your head on, you want to sanitize. I want to call Jamal out. Call me up. Because on our trip almost a year ago now in January to Lebanon, we got on the flight. We're all sitting in the same row and Zaina brings her sanitizing wipes and hands them to each of us. Oh, I know what you're going to say. Well, real quickly before Kim finishes on, I take Clorox wipes and I shove it in a Ziploc baggie and then put it in my backpack because it's always good to have those Clorox wipes. So I gave one to every single person. And we start wiping down our space, all those spaces we just mentioned. And Jamal's like, what are these industrial Clorox wipes? Yeah, (laughs) I'm not judging the fact that they were sanitizing wipes, but you know, when they give the commercial sanitizing wipes for people to use regularly, they don't smell like straight bleach like the ones Zaina pulled out. Like they were literally (laughs) industrial style. Let me sanitize probably a salmonella stainless steel counter that has a whole bunch of meat guts or something on it. Like it smelled like straight bleach. So you know what? Kudos to you on having them. They were good, but those ones were not friendly scented. I just want to say that. In hindsight, though, this was in January before COVID had really hit the rest of the world. A couple months before. I still didn't even know what COVID was. It, neither did I. We were on a British Airlines international flight. That sanitizing wipe could have been the reason we did not get COVID on that trip. That's true. Could have been. Very true. (laughs) Because let me tell you something. When we were in London and we were in the lounge, I'm pretty sure that one individual who we know we're all talking about Mm -hmm. had COVID in that lounge. He looked like death and was coughing. Mm -hmm. Um, I can still hear Jamal in my head going, industrial? (laughs) You brought industrial Onto the airplane as he shakes his head and scoffs. But I do want to say that we used our tip to get upgraded. Well, we couldn't get upgraded because the plane was filled, but they did treat us like royalty and we were able to board the plane before anyone else able to board the plane. So at least only we were wafing in the bleach and the Clorox (laughs) smell. And if you're curious as to how we got on the plane before anyone else Leave a five-star review, screenshot, send it to us, and we'll give you that tip. So Zaina might use her industrial wipes, but I have just these very nice pre-packaged sanitizing wipes that are made from alcohol so they don't smell like bleach and they're not going to stain any of your clothing. They're so friendly scented. Either way, it gets the job done. At this point, with supply chains... Just get whatever you can. But these days, no one's <laughs> going to judge you now if it smells like straight bleach. You're going to be like, hey, yo, I'm protecting myself and no one's going to judge. Yeah. But, you know, a couple months before COVID, it was like, whoa, what is this person opening up on the plane? <laughs> <laughs> so hand in hand with the sanitizing wipes is hand sanitizer. There are a lot of hand sanitizers on the market right now. There's some that smell like tequila. Mm-hmm. There's- I like those. <laughs> <laughs> Ew. <laughs> I have not found tequila hand sanitizer. Well, I think they smell like it because when they can't actually make real hand sanitizer the way they usually do, they're using alcohol. And I think in terms of alcoholic beverages, the best one to really smell is going to be tequila. So a lot of the homemade sanitizers these days are with tequila. Yeah, we have a huge jug of that at my office. And every time I squirt it, it just grosses me out. (laughs) But whatever one you do, whatever scent you get, look for one that's 60% alcohol or more. And that's going to give you the most protection. TSA has actually changed the regulations because of COVID. So now instead of three ounces, you can actually bring 12 ounces of liquid, but only for hand sanitizers. Uh Other liquids, no, but you can have an increased hand sanitizer size, 12 ounces. Good to know. You obviously want to wear a mask. Actually, if you're flying, it's required. In a lot of places around the U.S., it's required to go into stores. Some places have even mandated as far as if you're out in public, you need a mask on. If you're traveling, you're going to be around any type of crowds. It's highly recommended, even if it's not required by regulations. 
Some people wear face shields. I've been trying to get one. I think they're so cute. Um, so <laughs> definitely wear one of those if you're into that. <laughs> <laughs> for a second, I believed you. And no, I'm, I am. No, 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 no. I believe that you are trying to get one. But when you said like, they're so cute. I think they're very cute. Aww. They're fashionable. Certain people could pull them off. And I dare say, Kim, you can probably <laughs> pull it off. I just don't want the one that has face shield written along the band of the head. Well, you know what? I have the one that says face shield on it. Not because I bought it, but because I am a nurse. My work provided it. And it has been the most comfortable one that I've used because it does have padding for your forehead. So the elastic band around the backside and then the padding on the forehead works out really good. You could always get one of those and decorate it and make it unique and custom <laughs> I was bedazzle just thinking, it yeah like kim like if you got a face shield and painted like the edges pink i think that would be so cute on you or they put usually... a flamingo sticker in the corner Ooh. they come in packs of five you can have a variety one nice. to match every outfit you have travel squad face shields coming soon <laughs> coming right up you know what i love the pictures that Brittany sends us when she's all up in her mask and her face shield in her car and just yeah way to way to serve and protect Brittany. Brittany can sport the face shield well too so i just want to pay tribute to Brittany on that she can rock it yeah, real hard can. too well shit now i want to go get a face shield <laughs> well Something for you, number four, Zayna, on our list here of things we need. Yes, neti pot, one of your personal favorites. So when we did go to Denver, I had a um, ear infection and a stuffed up nose. And so I climbed the Rockies regardless. I remember even at the end, Jamal told me, wow, Zane, I'm actually, I'm, I'm really proud of you. Way to be a trooper. I don't sit that shit out. Well, because you were complaining the whole time. So, you know, I was giving you a little compliment. <laughs> I was good on the trail. I was good on the trail. But anyways, Jamal and Brittany were telling me about this neti pot. And so I'm just like, what the hell is this? So we went to a CVS. I picked one up and Jamal very graciously demonstrated to me how to use a neti pot. It never hurts to clean your yourself out might as well <laughs> but anyways it's small it fits in your luggage and it is a lifesaver when you have a um, uh, what is it congestion yeah the, the, the nasal cavities are congested. so what does it actually do so what it is is what it looks like a little teapot and you fill it with warm distilled water and you put it in distilled wa water yes you don't want to use tap water because if there's bacteria it can go oh. into your sinus cavities and actually have bacteria go to your brain potentially. Oh. So you do want to use warm distilled water and you put in like a saline rinse and you put the teapot end into one nostril and you kind of tilt your head to a side and it fills up your cavity, your sinus cavity and nasal cavity with this warm water and it flushes out all of the mucus that has built up and it comes out the other side of your nose. Does it work even if you're so stuffed up you can't even blow your nose? Yes. Oh my gosh. It pushes that shit out. You've heard the expression in one year out the other. This is in one nose out the other. It's guaranteed. <laughs> Sounds gross. Like you literally just tilt your head to the side. And like Brittany said, it's like a teapot and you just boom, pour it like a teapot through that nostril and it goes out through the other one. But it cleans so it you real well. up your sinuses and your nasal cavity really, really well. And I actually first started using one in nursing school and Jamal and I went on a cruise once and cruises are known to be large cesspools of germs. And after the cruise, I got sick and I used the neti pot and felt a hundred times better. I have a, a side note I want to say about this. I got a call the other day from a cruise representative from Carnival asking if I wanted to book a cruise. And I was like, I'm not going to be booking a cruise anytime soon. This is November 2020. <laughs> I've been wanting to go on a cruise. I've been telling Brittany I want to go on a cruise when we can cruise again. But well, continue she, your story. She again. says they're booking into 2021 and 2022. And I'm like, you know, I don't have any plans to book a cruise anytime soon. <laughs> so on that subject real quick, without getting too far off from our episode, I was telling Brittany I was reading an article and that person who called you is correct. Cruises are about to relaunch in 2021. I don't know when. But they have certain safety procedures that they have to institute, obviously, in order to get back out sailing again. And I saw that certain cruise lines were offering free cruises to people to be the guinea pigs of their safety trial. So wow. you can get yourself a free cruise Whoa. if you are the guinea pig trial of their safety procedures. Maybe the wait, Travel wait, Squad podcast. Wait, I was telling Brittany I might consider it because it's going to be reduced <laughs> passengers capacity, obviously. So... I was thinking potentially, and they're not going to do super long durations. I think at first it was going to be like three days, not Perfect. keep you out of sea very long. No seven days, 10 day ones, but 
nonetheless, that is a viable option for anybody out there. I mean, I, I, I can't even tell you how excited I got because that would be so fun. <laughs> Could you imagine, though, if someone got COVID yeah. on the cruise? What if Everyone. we could dock? <laughs> but see, it's not yeah. as crazy. We just heard that there is a vaccine that's supposedly having real potential here with Pfizer. People are signing up to get this. And how do they know that it works? People are getting infected and have to be exposed to the virus. So I feel like this is no different. And this is also they are helping science and the rest of humanity. We, if we <laughs> did that, are helping the economy. I'm and always, and always, science. always about boosting the economy. There you go. Spin that dollar. Let's look into it. Hey, squaddies. We want to share one of our favorite travel products with you. Liquid IV is a category winning hydration brand fueling your well-being while traveling. One stick fits into 16 ounces of water to give you three times the electrolytes of traditional sports drinks and hydrates you two times faster than water alone. Their half ounce hydration multiplier powder packet is the one product you need in every suitcase, carry-on, and day pack. We use it while flying on planes because flights can be so dehydrating. We use it when we feel jet-lagged, when we're out on a hike, and after a long night out that has us feeling worn out. In just one stick, you get five essential vitamins, B3, B5, B6, B12, and vitamin C. Liquid IV also now comes in 12 delicious and refreshing flavors to keep your hydration routine exciting. Our favorites are the lemon lime and tangerine with immune support. It's made with premium ingredients, all non-GMO and gluten, dairy, and soy-free. Get 20% off when you go to liquidiv.com and use Travel Squad Podcast at checkout. That's 20% off anything you order when you shop better hydration today using promo code TRAVELSQUADPODCAST at liquidiv.com. Hey, squaddies. Let's take a quick detour to talk about our travel itineraries that we've created just for you. We just launched several new international trip itineraries, including Tulum and Japan. This is on top of the itineraries we already have for U.S. trips like the Hawaiian island of Kauai, the U.S. Virgin Islands, as well as national park trip itineraries, including Utah's Mighty Five National Parks and a week at Grand Teton and Yellowstone. These fully built out 20 to 30 page PDF guides are available for instant download on our site right now. Every detail of the trip is laid out for you, so all you have to do is download, book, show up, and have fun. The itineraries tell you where to fly into, the exact route to take, where to stay, park entrance prices, where to eat, driving distance between attractions, the things to see and do, even the hikes we recommend, their mileage, and the time to allot for each one. And believe it or not, so much more. Be sure to head over to TravelSquadPodcast.com to download your very own comprehensive travel itinerary today. So another tip that we have is to definitely bring your prescriptions. I mean, it might just be obvious, but you might forget a prescription or two. But squad tip, if you are going to another state or another area that has a pharmacy and you have some time to get your prescription transferred, you can have your prescription transferred to that pharmacy, fill it, and then enjoy your vacation still. We had to do that one time. Brittany forgot one of her prescriptions before we got on a cruise. Ironically, we were in Florida. So Brittany called and transferred her prescription to a pharmacy in Florida, picked it up, and we were good to go. But yes, do bring your prescriptions. It's going to help keep you healthy and don't forget them. Well, on the same subject of pills, if we're talking prescription, how about some vitamins here? Vitamin C, Zycam, ginger chews, all these things are immunity boosters. So if you're going to get on a plane, go on a cruise, travel anywhere, even be amongst people, these are definitely good things to have to help boost your immune system naturally. I knew vitamin C and Zycam were immune boosters, but I did not know ginger chews. Ginger is more so for your stomach. It helps your stomach and settle it. But yes, ginger is also good for your immune system. Zinc as well is good for your immune system. And even right now as we record, I'm drinking turmeric ginger tea. Turmeric and ginger as a combo, prime time. Vitamin D, I believe as well, is a big one that's been talked about lately. Yeah, get it naturally. Go out in the sun. It's winter now, so I guess you can't. So take your supplement. But if you are fortunate enough, like we are to live in San Diego, even though it is a little bit cooler, we have sunny days. Step outside, get it naturally if you can. Vitamin D is good. Skirting along to the next one, I would just like to say this is my personal favorite. It has my uh, best friend come clutch (laughs) for pretty much every single one of us. It is the antibiotic 
Cipro, which we have mm. referred to on our show notes as Lifesaver. Well, any antibiotic, really. Yes. However, this comes back into play with what we were talking about. Kim, she got sick on the Inca Trail, took a Cipro, was feeling better. I was in the Philippines one time, had Cipro and an antibiotic. I needed it. I had an upper respiratory infection, felt amazing right afterwards. So if you are going to be traveling, tell your doctor. They usually will give you a prescription for an antibiotic in case you get some sort of bacterial infection, diarrhea, etc. It's good for it. So it's always good to have just in case. And if you're fortunate enough to travel to a country too that doesn't actually require prescriptions for that, such as Mexico, pick it up there because even when we cross the border or in countries that don't have it, I always pick up antibiotics just to have for those emergency scenarios. Yeah. So when we went to Lebanon in January, even though I wiped down my seat with industrial wipes, even though I took a Zycam, by the time we got to Lebanon, um, I think it was like two days later, I ended up with strep throat. I woke up in the morning. I could barely talk. I could barely swallow. Like my throat hurt so bad. Thank goodness I didn't know what COVID was because I'm sure that I would have sent myself into a panic attack thinking it was COVID. Absolutely, you would have. Oh my gosh. You're already in a panic attack. You know why you got sick, Zaina? Why did I get sick? Because nobody knows more about getting sick on vacation (laughs) than you. (laughs) That's a good one. I was like really waiting for a real answer. (laughs) So anyways, like I was miserable. So nurse Brittany uh, examined me and she discovered that I had strep throat. So luckily I did have Cipro that I bought gosh, we docked someplace in Mexico on a cruise a few years ago. And I bought Cipro at the pharmacy because he didn't need a prescription because I'm like, you know what, this may come in handy someday. And it came in handy that day. And by afternoon, I was feeling so much better. Um, obviously, I was still taking the, the, the Cipro for the course of the, dur- the duration of the dosage. But it made me feel so much better. And I remember getting so annoyed with Brittany because I was like, well, what should I do? And she's like, well, maybe you should sit the day out. And then I got mad at her and I was like, sit the day out. What do you mean sit the day out? And then Brittany's like, okay, well, then don't sit the day out. And I was like, why would you tell me to sit the day out? (laughs) You're just over there. Because well, you're asking what to do, Zaina. <laughs> you're well, over there just giving us your germs. Right. Okay. So let me take that back. Infecting I asked, everybody, Zaina. <laughs> I asked Brittany what to do, and I should have specified, I don't want to hear sit it out. I wanted to hear a different answer, but you know. And what did I say? You should just go out, Zaina. Who cares? <laughs> You're always encouraging her along, just like you did when she got sick in Peru and you were like, just go to Rainbow Mountain. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so I went out. So you know what? Brittany gives the best advice. Brittany gives honest advice, but it wasn't the advice that I wanted to hear. So I flipped out. (laughs) (laughs) So Zaina had a freak out. Let's just say that. I did. Whenever she's sick on a trip, she has a freak out. She might as well call her Jamal at that point. Oh, he admits that he has freak out. No, I'm just playing on the banter. I don't admit it, but I'm just trying to, you know, make light of the situation so Zana doesn't feel so bad. Well, you know what, Jamal? Nobody knows freak outs like you do. <laughs> Nobody true. knows them like me, that's for sure. I view Cipro too. If we go back to that Inca Trail episode, I got really sick the last night on a hike. Montezuma's it, Revenge. In the Andes Mountains when we had to be up at like three in the morning. I got sick around one in the morning and I never was able to go back to sleep because I was just so sick. And as soon as I took that Cipro as well as Imodium, (laughs) the the double punch combo, (laughs) then I was able to finally have some relief and over the next few hours felt better. Well, I'm glad you mentioned that because that's also next on the list, Pepto-Bismol and Imodium for your anti-diarrheals. So do bring those as well. Like you heard it from Kim firsthand. Sometimes you need the one-two punch. <laughs> okay. So for <laughs> anyone who doesn't, I, you know what? I only learned what Imodium was because of Jamal and Brittany. And Jamal, go ahead and tell us what it is. Imodium backs you up. It slows down your diet. <laughs> Why are you laughing? That's what it does. It slows down your digestive gut to keep things from coming out of you so fast. That's an eloquent way of putting it, I feel like. I think that you did it so eloquently. So if you guys didn't know, I'm the only squad member that is prone to motion sickness. So personally, I think that it's very important to add ginger chews to your bag, as well as pressure bands, Dramamine, and if you aren't into Dramamine, a scopolamine patch to help with any motion sickness that you guys might experience. What is a pressure band? So pressure band actually is a band that goes around two pressure points. You wear one on both arms at 
I think they're acupressure points and they just help settle your nausea so that and prevent it so that you don't get sick. So I always bring these whenever I am on a boat of any sort, cruise, small boat, ferry, anything like that. And I also bring the Dramamine for that reason too. But we recently had a flight that had so much turbulence and I do not get motion sickness on an airplane, but we were on a flight that was just crazy turbulent and I ended up taking a Dramamine mid-flight. I cried on that one. That was really intense. But you know what? There were a lot of people puking on that flight. It was that turbulent. Was it the one coming back from Dubai? Yes. Yeah, leaving Dubai when oh, we were flying wow. to London. You don't remember how I bad remember. the turbulence I was? was? I yes. Not yes. You, I you, I was you and I die. were chilling in the back, and then Zena and Brittany were in front of us. Mm-hmm. I think you took a Dramamine too. I, I might have because it was really just dropping in the stomach. Yeah, I, I pulled it down and I was like, who wants one? And I think we all pretty much took one. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember what episode we talked about this on, but we did talk about it. I mean, this was literally the worst turbulence of our life and no exaggeration if we're going to give turbulence on a scale of one to ten this was averaging between a nine and a ten and it lasted for a good hour plus between an hour to an hour and 15 minutes so just imagine shaking constantly on an airplane really violently for an hour plus thanks trump (laughs) it's trump's fault it was (laughs) so two stories real quickly one general and two superbly funny. So the first one, Brittany is always really good about sharing her Dramamine because I remember we were on the sunset cruise in Hawaii. And before we even started, there was a lady in the back puking in one of the puke buckets. And Brittany was so kind. She went to the lady, rubbed her back and gave her some Dramamine. And then we continued on and started the booze cruise. And then the second time is when we were in South Africa. (laughs) And we went out to do the, what is it? The cage diving with the sharks. And I wasn't feeling well. And I didn't understand why, because I do not get motion sickness, but I was not feeling well at all. So one of the ladies who was um, one of the volunteers on the boat, she came to me to offer me a mint. And I looked at her so confused because I was so nauseous that I looked at her and I said, is this for when I throw up? And she's like, no, 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 this is going to help the nausea. Now it turns out, surprise, surprise, I actually got really sick, not from nausea, but like actually I got sick. Nobody knows sickness on vacation like Xana does. <laughs> I don't know how I got sick, but I got sick. That's why I was feeling so nauseous. Brittany also started to feel nauseous, not because she was sick, but because she was feeling nauseous. So her and I cuddled under a blanket because it was freezing out there at the front of the boat. Now, because all the chop was in the water for the sharks to come to. Chum. Chum. <laughs> because all the chum was in the water for the sharks to come get it so we can see the sharks. The water was choppy, chum in the water. (laughs) What Jamal said. So anyways, there's a whole bunch of birds flying above us. And I made the comment to Brittany that nothing can get worse than these birds shitting on us. And you know what happened? A bird shot on us. (laughs) I, it's Did. good luck when a bird shits on you, I hear. I don't know. I don't know. But anyways, so those are our, uh, my stories about uh, getting sick. So bring Dramamine, <laughs> apparently. Bring Dramamine. Keeping on with the pharmaceuticals. I mean, these are really important. So I'm just going to come out and say it. Continuing with the theme, do bring ibuprofen, Tylenol, anything like that that you're going to normally need if you have a fever, headache, etc. They're always just good to have awesome. on hand. Squad tip. Excedrin is the best over-the-counter pain reliever for hangover headaches. I mean, it's the headache medicine. That's their tagline. I swear, (laughs) forget about ibuprofen and Tylenol. It is all about Excedrin when you have a hangover headache. And that includes being sick while traveling. You may have had a few glasses of wine. Doesn't Excedrin have some caffeine in it? I think, yes, it does. Yes, it does. That's probably what helps, too, is the caffeine. Whatever it is, it's a magic pill. It doesn't matter. I'm glad you mentioned that now. You've been holding out on me with this one, Kim. I, this is the first time hearing it. I was about to say, I've never taken Excedrin before, but I've definitely had hangovers. That's the way to go. The other thing I want to say is melatonin, baby. I will not travel without melatonin. I was going to say, if you're so hungover that you just need to sleep it off, melatonin would be a great pill to take. Yes. There are some situations where you need to sleep. This could be... You're on a red eye flight and you want to sleep on the plane so that when you get to your destination, you're well rested. Your immune system is strong so you don't get infected by germs. 
or maybe jet lag has got you feeling sluggish and feeling sick, even though you may not actually be sick. Melatonin is a magic little pill. And actually, they have chewables, they have dissolvables, they have pills you can swallow, all types of forms. Melatonin knows forms of pills. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, I cannot speak highly enough about melatonin. Always bring it on your trips. You're so passionate about it. <laughs> and also, you should bring any medication specifically that you may need for your destination. For example, when we hiked Machu Picchu and we were in the Andes, you want altitude sickness pills. You don't know how you're going to react to the altitude there. You may get sick. It's good to have the medication just in case. When you go to countries like South Africa, you might want to get malaria pills. So just research where you're going and what medications you might need to be safe and stay safe and healthy while you're in the area. Yeah, there's lots of travel clinics that you can go to and tell them where you're going. They'll give the recommendations. You could even sometimes speak about it with your doctor. Now, some doctors can actually prescribe those type of medications. Sometimes, depending on, they cannot, and you do need those travel clinics. But again, just know what you may need and obviously at your discretion if you want to take those precautions and get those medications. Last two items of what to pack are sunscreen and aloe vera. They go hand in hand. Jamal's favorite I was going to say, I think these are on here to throw shade at me, which is <laughs> A-OK. -okay. I have sensitive skin. What can I say? Um, Very pale. <laughs> you know, thanks, Kim, for making me feel bad about myself. But you know what? It is what it is. I can't help the type of pigmentation that I have and my light, sensitive skin to sun. So have your sunscreen. Have some aloe vera in case you get a little bit burned. It's definitely going to make you a lot more comfortable. All right, let's move into our next section. We've talked about what to pack. Now let's talk about how you can prepare and some precautions you can take. So this isn't just like a day or two before the trip. These are things that you should probably upkeep. And one of the things you should do is to just make sure that your regular vaccinations are up to date. Whooping, as always. As always, tetanus, whooping cough, those things aren't things that you prepare for. It's good to just be prepared and have them up to date. Get your boosters. Hepatitis. HPV. <laughs> well, depending on what type of traveling trip you're going to be doing, <laughs> maybe you do need that one. Maybe you don't. That's a good tip, Kim. That's a very good tip. As some, some children don't get vaccinated young enough for that when they should. But that's a topic for another it's never time. too early to start preparing for your trip. <laughs> <laughs> you also want to check the CDC website for your destination and see if they recommend any additional vaccinations like typhoid, for example. And that goes back to what we were saying, too, about the malaria, things like that. Again, those recommendations are always good. And it's especially important right now. The CDC is a wonderful resource for traveling during a pandemic because they will have all the recommendations for all the destinations you're going to in terms of precautions you should take when you're there and things you should do ahead of time to get yourself vaccinated or healthy. You know, before we went to South Africa, the travel clinic that I went to, they did recommend typhoid for going to South Africa. And I looked at her and I was like, you know what? I actually got that when I was 20, when I went overseas to Lebanon. So I think I'm just going to roll the dice with this one. And she did not laugh. <laughs> I was like sitting there trying not to laugh. I even did the gesture of rolling the dice. I laughed oh. at the end of it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I had fun with it. And then she just like looks at me completely unthrilled with what I just said. And so I was like, okay, moving on. You know what? I didn't get my typhoid shot either for that. So, you know, again, always good to know what they recommend at your discretion. Again, what you think you want to get to protect yourself. Apparently, Kim wants the HPV shot. I've already had it. <laughs> I'm prepared for these trips. <laughs> um, well, you know, my mom actually got typhoid years ago in Lebanon, and this is when the Civil War was going on then. And so, um, I don't know, my mama beat typhoid, so I feel like... So you thought you could too? I've got my mama's genes. Roll the dice with that one. Roll the dice with that one. Well, something you don't want to roll the dice with, especially traveling now, do get yourself a COVID test prior to travel. Two reasons. Most importantly... If you have it, you don't want to give it to anybody else. So you do want to know if you're going to be going on a trip. You don't want to spread it even further. But secondly, on top of that, now lots of places, especially traveling out of country, places that are open to Americans to go or any other countries for that matter. Or it, even within the United States. Yeah. Lots of places are requiring you to prove that you had a negative COVID test within so many days, so many hours prior to your arrival. So be sure to get yourself a COVID test. 
Brittany, why don't you tell them the easiest way to do it and the federal service number that there is to call to get that information to find the best place in your area? It's 211. Not 911. 211. In the U.S. That is a federal number for county resources, and it will give you general information. And right now, that number will direct you to the locations that they are doing COVID testing. So obviously, there are places that guarantee that you could go privately to get you your test results faster. But if you want to go to the free ones that are being run by the government in terms of them paying for the test, sending it out to labs, call 211 and they can direct you to locations in your area where they are providing those tests. Damn, when you told Brittany, like, tell us what that number is, I thought she was gonna give us a seven digit number and I'm like, wow, that's impressive that she hasn't memorized. 211. 211, I learned something new. Also, before you go on a trip, make sure to call your healthcare provider or a travel clinic and you can actually get the vaccinations that you need and the prescriptions that you need for your destination. Usually this is done about six to eight weeks prior to your trip. So just keep that in mind. And finally, in this section, we want to talk about, and I would be remiss if I didn't say this, this is my profession, do get yourself travel health insurance. Two reasons. One, whenever we travel internationally, we've always gotten it anyway. You know, if you end up in the hospital, need to be life flighted out, travel medical insurance will cover you for that. And also, if you chip your tooth, which I happened to do <laughs> when I was in Europe. At a breakfast it, buffet. Yeah, at a breakfast buffet, oh. on, but on a fork. It's the most lamest thing ever. <laughs> Anyway, it would have even paid for me to fix my teeth over there, although I didn't want to take time. I didn't do it, but that's neither here nor there. The travel health insurance is always going to come in clutch if you need it. And some countries now requiring you to prove that you have health insurance that will cover COVID because other countries don't want to pay your expenses if you get sick over there. And squad tip, if you're booking your trip with a credit card, check your credit card's coverages, benefits, and perks, because some of them do offer a certain level of travel health insurance as well. Very good tip. Yeah. I mean, we even mentioned this in our jingle. And don't forget your travel insurance. <laughs> <laughs> Recorded that way before COVID. Yeah, we did. So, Still relevant. Absolutely. Even more so now. Okay, so no matter how much you pack and plan and prepare, you can still get sick on a trip. Just ask Zaina. I was going <laughs> to say that too. <laughs> so we have to give you some tips on what to do if you find yourself in a situation like Zaina has. <laughs> Zaina, what do you do? Um, I usually wake up and, well, let me tell you this. I don't think I've even told you guys this, but years ago I bought a one-way ticket to Europe. And then from there, I know that you guys know this, but I moved west to east until I finally hit Beirut, Lebanon. So the second stop was Denmark to stay with a friend for two weeks. And as soon as I arrived, guess what happened? You got sick. I got so sick. Oh my gosh. I was so sick. That herpes outbreak come? <laughs> Uh -oh. No, <laughs> we were talking about it earlier, so no, I had to I, ask if that's what it was. Oh, no, 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 no. I laugh. I do think it's funny because I know that we were talking about that earlier. <laughs> I know where you're going with that. So anyways, no, you know, it, it wasn't bad. I mean, I was sick, but it wasn't bad. And I just remember my friend telling me that, you know, you could probably see my family doctor. He probably wouldn't charge you anything. But also the Danish, I think they're like 40% taxed just because of- They have nationalized health care. You know exactly. what? Yeah, but I used to think that number was staggering but if you look at our tax brackets we're not far off and yet we don't get those kinds of I benefit i was just about to say then that's bullshit if we're paying that, those kind of taxes i'm in like a 35 percent dang now we know how much money make him damn <laughs> damn girl <laughs> i mean i don't even know my percentages that's neither here nor there at okay. this point, though. But, well, anyways, I didn't end up seeing the doctor. I was fine. Um, when I was in Lebanon, when I used to live there, I remember this is my study abroad year. Once a month for the first five months, I would get sick. And that's why I don't eat the nuts in Lebanon, because it was always nuts that I got sick. I of. saw you eat nuts in Lebanon. I mean, what type of nuts? <laughs> <laughs> These nuts. <laughs> no, I really don't think it was me, though, because like I'm very cautious. Even the the... The nuts that one of my cousins brought when he came to visit us, I gave it to Jamal and Brittany because I'm so afraid of nuts from Lebanon. I don't know. But anyways, that's neither here nor there. I did see the doctor on campus. I remember I got a nasty ear infection when I was there. So I went to go see the doctor on campus and it was so bad that he looked in my ear. He jumped back and he said, whoa. Oh my God. Yeah, it was so fucking rude. And even that's my scary. roommate was like, Ew, why would he say that? <laughs> Apparently it was really bad. It was 
I don't know. I didn't get to see it. But anyways, you know, I'll either ask Brittany what to do nowadays or I, you know, I have the Cipro. So I manage. I'm fine. I don't sit shit out. Well, now you can just refer back to this episode for what to do. Exactly. <laughs> but beyond Zana regaling us with her tales of all the times that she's gotten sick, there are several things you can do. Again, lots of pharmacies in other countries don't require prescriptions for certain things. So even before your trip, research to see if the country you're going to has pharmacy regulations for certain medications that you may need should you not pack them. Again, going back to the travel health insurance that we mentioned, if you pick it up, they do have pharmacy coverage. They will tell you where to go to get it. If you call them, there's an 800 number that you can reach and speak to somebody and they'll advise you what hospitals, what doctors to go to that are the best in the area, pharmacies. So that kind of goes hand in hand on getting that travel medical insurance and then utilizing it there if you have to, in worst case scenario, go somewhere, whether it be pharmacy or doctor. You know what I like about foreign countries is they actually have pharmacies as stores. I feel mm-hmm. like anywhere in the United States, you go into a store and there's a pharmacy, but like anywhere else in the world, you actually have mm-hmm. pharmacy stores. That's true. That's a good option. Well, leave it to America. We have like a CVS and a Rite Aid, and then they just said, why are we limiting ourselves? Let's sell all the shit that we can sell. So, <laughs> <Alcohol>. yeah, <laughs> tobacco in a pharmacy. I actually think that is a good point. I think everywhere else in the world has better pharmacies in the U.S. Like you can't just walk into a pharmacy here in the U.S. and get so many of the things that you can get in places like Italy or Mexico or Thailand or the Philippines or probably everywhere else in the world but America. (laughs) It's just so regulated here. Yeah. No, I mean, even when I lived in Lebanon, you just see the green light that says Saidaliye, which is a pharmacy in Arabic. And you could just get not anything in there. But like when it comes to pharmaceuticals, you can just go in and get anything. And if you do get a prescription, there so much cheaper than what you would pay in the United States without insurance. $10 Cipro, Mexico. $5 Plan B, Mexico. $50 (laughs) in the U.S. Stock up, people. That's very true. (laughs) You know, in South Africa, they were handing out free condoms. That's true. Wonderful. Um, I I also want to say something about when you're in another country and you don't speak the language, but you are having an issue and you need to communicate with the pharmacist, they may not actually speak English. I mean, assuming you as a listener is from the U.S. speaking English. I know we have tons of international listeners, so... It's okay. You can communicate with a pharmacist using body language, hand signals. I remember going into a pharmacy in Florence, Italy, because I had, or my boyfriend at the time had like a cough and a sore throat and we were wanting cough drops. So we're like signaling to our throat and like coughing and he knew exactly what we wanted and he gave us some of the most amazing throat lozenges I have ever had. And I know throat lozenges. They were very effective. <laughs> Nobody knows throat lozenges like Kim. <laughs> but I know Zena got upset about this earlier. But if you are sick during a trip, you might want to consider sitting out and letting your body heal. <laughs> Zena sat out one time, but she pretty much put herself in her own time out when she was sick on a bullet train in Japan I- from an ear infection. I, I sat freak out freak <laughs> out I okay I went to a different part of the train so I can be by myself and but pout. I did you were quarantining gave yourself was, a timeout I gave myself a timeout <laughs> I didn't actually like sit out like I'm gonna sit in my hotel and I'm gonna miss the day and I'm gonna rest but it was more of I don't want to be around anyone I want to be by myself leave me alone yeah, I know. We're just uh, throwing shade at you on that one. I, you have never sat out, and we know this earlier when you were appalled by Brittany's statement <laughs> that you sit out because you have strep throat. But you were pretty much asking, what should I do with, well, what else can you do other than take this and then sit out? So you didn't really leave for much options, but again, neither here nor there. You can take the lead, and I will dare say this. I've sat out one time when I was in the Philippines. Ooh. I was so sick before I took my Cipro with upper respiratory infection that I was telling Brittany just put me on a fucking flight back home I, I just want to go, go home yeah you know what I'll pull that every once in a while it's okay I mean <laughs> but, you came home from a theme park once because your appendix uh, were about to burst I got hospitalized after that so let's <laughs> that, you, that was the real deal you rode so many rides until you couldn't oh more yeah with oh yeah, yeah 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 I was like no there's no way I'm gonna sit this out I rode roller coasters all sick and then halfway through that I was like oh that was a bad idea so I had to have my friends leave Magic Mountain early take me to the Burbank airport. And I flew back up north to Sacramento. Uh, This is when we still live there. But anyway, back to my Philippines story. 
Brittany went out with her sister, brother, her entire family was there. So I was too sick. I was like, no, just leave me behind. So I wasn't afraid to sit out. If you need to rest, sometimes you really have to rest. I ordered him soup and I said, bye. Oh, I <laughs> loved the room service soup that they brought up. It was like a lifesaver. What kind of soup Life was it? Yeah, uh, Take it, us through the spread. I don't remember because it's <laughs> been a while. All I remember was it is kind of like the Philippine version of pho or ramen. They call theirs mammy Yummy. over there. And it was a mammy soup. So it's a noodle soup, really brothy, good broth flavor. It was bomb. I cannot wait for Philippines 2022. Ooh, I'm excited about it. You know, another time I didn't sit out was when I woke up at 1 a.m. in Peru and puked my guts out. And we had to wake up at 3 to get picked up at 3.30 to go hike the mountain with the highest altitude I've ever experienced. And uh, I did it, man. It was about 14,000, 15,000 feet high in the Andes. I remember being on the bus, going around those roundabouts, feeling so nauseous, feeling so sick, praying that I wouldn't get sick again. I dominated. We were in a hostel that time, and I was awoken by the the sound. The rumbling in the bathroom. (laughs) And I was like, oh, I am needed. It is my time to act. And I had the only medication I had on me. And I don't know why I didn't give you anything else. I, I I did have other stuff, but the one thing I thought would have worked was Tums. I'm like, here's Zana, here's some Tums. <laughs> <laughs> you know, whatever it was, it was it was wonderful. It helped, and then I was able to actually fall asleep before we had to wake up. And I, you know, I wasn't sick after that. What was so baffling is <laughs> Brittany had the exact same thing that I did at dinner: drink and food. But no one I knows. Think we all sick did. Like we I all did. had the same thing. Yeah. You just had a more sensitive stomach, and you know what? Kim took care of you on that trip. And then a few days later, you took care of her, Mm -hmm. encouraged her. Unfortunately for Kim, even if she wanted, there was no sitting out. We were on a four-day hike to Machu Picchu. So there was really nowhere to go. We were stranded out in the middle of nature. That's why I've never sat out. I didn't have the option. I didn't have the option on that one. It's a good thing that it hit on the last day, not day two. But you know, with the Cipro, I think that you you healed pretty quickly. Yes, yes. So Miracle pill next to melatonin. The last thing we want to talk about is hospitals in other countries. I think for people who are not well-traveled, there may be some hesitation or fear around hospitals, but we're here to share that you don't have to have that fear, especially if you are sick and need to go to one. So we live in San Diego, like most of you guys know, and a lot of people actually in San Diego travel to Mexico specifically for medical dental just because it's a lot cheaper and it is good and it's safe to use. And it's much cheaper if you didn't get your travel health insurance. Yeah. And, you know, again, depending on how rugged of a traveler you are and where you really like to explore, you know, you go to certain places in Europe, they're going to have nationalized health care. I know that sometimes scares people, but the health care there is going to be good for you, even in other countries that you wouldn't think necessarily, you know, yes, I'm not going to sit here and say every hospital or clinic is going to be five star, but there is always going to be some place within the country, particularly even if you're going to major cities that has really, really good hospitals, clinics, etc. So you shouldn't be scared if you have to use it. We were actually on a trip to China a couple of years ago, and one of our fellow tour group members got really, really sick. And when we all went home back to America, she had to stay in a Chinese hospital for several more days because of how sick she was. But the hospital was fully equipped to take care of her. We have another friend from our hometown of Woodland, California, who was in Thailand and had gotten injured, had to stay in a Thai hospital for many, many weeks. They took very good care of him. Mm -hmm. And I think you guys have a story about your mom, too. Well, Zana mentioned this earlier, how my mom had gotten typhoid when we were talking about typhoid. And Zana was rolling the dice like she was uh, (laughs) playing craps in Vegas or something. But uh, my mom has been hospitalized in Lebanon with typhoid. She survived it. She's fine. She gave birth in Lebanon, again, at one of the university hospitals out there. My eldest sister, Nejwa, born over there. You know, Hollywood favorite Keanu Reeves, born over there yes. too. So, in you know, Lebanon? yeah, yes. born at the AUB hospital, same wow. hospital my uh, sister was born. Is he at. Lebanese? No, no, he is not. But do you remember when we were even driving by it when we were in Lebanon? Kim was like, oh, it's the AUB hospital. Keanu Reeves was born you here. You did say that. Yeah. So, again, even someplace, and I hate to play off of negative stereotypes, but even in the Mideast, you know, like there are 
quality hospitals. So it doesn't really matter where you are. There always will be reputable clinics. And again, going back to the travel insurance, I want to harp on that because it's so important in general and especially now with COVID. Again, if you have it, they do have the recommended hospitals that are the better ones in those locations. So they can always direct you on where to go if you have that based on their knowledge and recommendations of what are good and what's not. Yeah. And even when I was in the Philippines as a child growing up, my brother and I were about five and four at the time. We were sitting on a table outside coloring and a coloring book. And my brother fell off the table backwards and hit his head on the cement and cracked his head open. And my mom had to take him to a clinic in the Philippines for him to get stitches in the back of his head. Oh, I didn't know that. That sounds so painful. Yeah. And just real quick, last thing on hospitals too, you know, I'm saying there will be the good ones and a lot of other places. And again, not playing on stereotypes, but you know, Philippines, Mexico, even when we were in South Africa, they were telling us about this too. You know, there's the regular hospitals and then there's the private ones where people who have more money and means in those countries seek care. So, you know, over there it's catered to be for more well-to-do people. But if you are traveling and as American have dollars, even though over there in those countries, those services are technically expensive and exclusive in terms of what it costs here to over there. I mean, it's very, very cheap. So you will find it. So I think that about wraps it up unless any of you ladies have any other final thoughts. Final thought for me would be that I think there's a lot of fear, a lot of caution for good reason around being sick or getting sick while traveling. And yes, you want to take all of those precautions into mind and and prepare yourself as much as you can using all of the tips in this episode. But I do say it's still safe to travel as long as it's within guidelines and you don't have to be fearful of traveling because of illness. I do it all the time. So do we. You don't have to sit it out. (laughs) (laughs) All right. I think it's my favorite time of the week. Questions of the week. All right. Our first and only question this week comes from Gordon from Las Vegas, Nevada. Thank you, Gordon. And he is asking, which travel insurance do you recommend? We've been talking a lot about it in this episode. Perfect question. I'm just going to come out and say it because, again, this is my profession, not specifically travel insurance, but just insurance in general. But every time we go, I always use GeoBlue HTH Worldwide. GeoBlue is Blue Cross, Blue Shield. It's good for international travel anywhere you go outside of the United States. And you can purchase it in denominations of a maximum value of like 50000 100000 250 all the way up to a million dollars in coverage. And that's an allowance that they give you for covered medical services that you will need. And again, it includes things like if you get injured on a ski slope and need to be life flighted out, it pays for your helicopter. If you need to be hospitalized, medications, teeth fixed, regular visits, prescriptions, it is covered with that travel insurance. It's very affordable. The prices are based off of your age and how long you're going to be gone. So the older you are, yes, you know, it does get a little bit more expensive. But if you're traveling anyway, it's nothing that's crazy unaffordable for you. Not to be morbid or anything, but if you die, doesn't it pay some type of benefit in that regard? <laughs> yeah. I was going to say that it, too. It, it <laughs> does. One, if you're on your deathbed, it will pay for a family member to come from the United States to be by your side as you're yeah. dying if they can't actually fly you back. And yes, it does pay for reparation of remains if you were to pass so that your body could get back to the United States. So taking a real morbid turn there, Brittany, but very good <laughs> question. So I, I think that just showcases the comprehensiveness of it, right? You know, it's not like regular insurance that we think, oh, how much does it cost for me to go to the doctor? How much is it going to pay for a prescription? This is literally a pool of money. You choose the benefit amount when you're traveling of how much you want. I always choose a million when Brittany and I travel. I mean, you just never know, right? Mm -hmm. So... I would definitely recommend that HTH Worldwide Geo Blue. I have a friend whose grandmother passed away and her one wish was not to be cremated and they had to cremate her because it was too expensive to fly the body from. Oh, that's sad. Yeah, it was too expensive from California to New York. It costs a lot of money. 
So can anybody buy the insurance themselves or they have to go to someone like you? They can definitely go to the website, buy it themselves. But if somebody's not understanding what they're seeing, wants more explanations, feel free to DM me specifically. I can definitely go ahead and help you out. I've actually had listeners reach out before about it. And also in the show notes, we will include a link to the website just as well for you guys if you want to do it on your own. And you can also find it on our website at www.travelsquadpodcast.com. Yes. Nice. All right, ladies and gents. Well, that is all we have for you this week. Thank you so much for listening in. Please keep the adventures going with us. Follow us on Instagram. Subscribe to us on YouTube at Travel Squad Podcast. And send us in your questions of the week. And if you found the information in this episode to be useful, or if you thought we were just plain funny, please make sure to share it with a friend that would enjoy it too. As always, guys, please subscribe, rate and review our podcast. And you know it, tune in every Travel Tuesday for new episodes. Stay tuned for next week's episode. We have more amazing adventures and tips in store for you. Woo! Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.